esoteric truths hidden from us about the Bible, the study of the Bible with physiology and spirituality. You see, for thousands of years, the ancients, they knew this esoteric truth about who we truly are, especially when it comes to the teachings of the Bible, of Jesus. And when we really think about and dig deep into the light and the darkness, and who said it? Who said it the best? Jesus, in his teachings, said it the best. He who follows me will not walk in darkness. So today we're going to deep dive into the esoteric hidden Bible studies that we have not been taught. Churches do not want me to speak of this. Let's begin, my friend. In the brain, in the cranium, there is the cerebrum. The cerebrum in particular, the claustrum is sitting right there in the middle of the head. From the claustrum, there is a secretion, a brain fluid. This fluid is an oil, and in ancient times, this fluid was called, in Greek, the Christos. It's called the Christ. It's the beautiful fluid, which comes from the cerebrum, and it goes down the spinal cord. It reaches the sacral plexus, right next door to the sacrum, which if you don't know are the five bottom most fused vertebrae, the bones at the bottom of our spinal column. The bottom most portion is called the coccyx. Above that, connected to the sacrum, are five fused bones. The sacral plexus is connected to the sacrum. This is the last part, the bottom of the spinal cord, where this fluid falls from the cerebrum and pours down the spine into the sacrum. Now let's talk about the claustrum. The claustrum, this is very interesting because it has to do with the story of Santa Claus. So the claustrum, otherwise known as the holy claustrum, simply because of its oil, the Christos, that is produced and secreted. Now the word secret is a secretion. This secretion and the sacrum is the sacred heart of the secret. As the secretion pulls down the spinal column and it reaches the sacrum, this is the way in which our body was designed and the spinal cord is basically an extension of our brain. And also the thinker. I always speak of this in meditation. The mind will do what it's supposed to do. It is not your job to control this, to manipulate it, it's your job to simply step back and allow this to be. Now, the Holy Claustrum, otherwise known as, this is very important, the Santa Claustrum, because this fluid that goes down to the sacred places is a sacred fluid. And this is where the story of Santa Claus, we all know the story. So physiology and the Bible are basically a manual on physiological regeneration. Very, very key. So back to this fluid, this oil, this Christ oil. With this fluid, every month, when the moon is in the sign where your sun was when you were born, this is where astrology actually comes into play. This is exactly what it's for and what it means. Your chart, your star charts. Now this seed is planted in the solar plexus, which is right above the sacral plexus. Now that germ, that oil, this Christos, is born in Bethlehem because the solar plexus is also known as the Bethlehem, where the seed with the Christ is born. This oil needs to return to the midbrain. See, this oil ascends in the spinal cord, the vibration of the oil of the Christ increases. Now, differentiated in the pineal gland and the pituitary gland before it is sent down the spinal cord. And the pineal gland is the electric portion and the pituitary gland is the magnetic portion. So the oil is differentiated and it's brought down the spinal cord by the pingala and the ida nerves. Now, these are also known as the Kundalini and the Kundabhafa. I'm sure you've heard of the Kundalini. If you have practiced any sort of spiritual teachings or even dug into it a little bit, you've heard about raising your Kundalini, awakening the Kundalini energy. That's what this is. 
That's exactly what this is. Now, I think it's very important to note that the great teachers of our time, Sai Guru specifically, speaks of the Kundalini awakening and how it's very powerful and also very dangerous. It's one of those things where you must be ready. So as this seed arrives at the sacral plexus and it awaits for the germinating of the seed once a month, 12 times a year, if we're able to transmute that seed and cause it to rise. As it rises in the spinal cord, it eventually reaches the medulla oblongata and the pons and the midbrain, and it crosses the vagus nerve, also known as the pneumogastric nerve, which is a nerve that descends from the brain, from the pineal gland and pituitary glands, and it feeds the lungs and the stomach. This is a network of nerves, and this network of nerves is called the tree of life. You see, ancients knew that this seed was born in Bethlehem, okay, once a month, and it is the Christ, the Christos. And if we can abstain from sex or masturbation or these pleasures, we can then save this seed and it can rise again through the heart chakra through the throat chakra and eventually this seed would reach its higher vibration you see because i think it's well known by now if you've studied the chakras at all the lower chakras vibrate at a very different frequency than our chakras above okay the crown the brow the throat the heart solar plexus as this seed this oil rises it also raises in vibration so my friend with proper practices meditative practices with breathing with visualization this can happen every month and in turn build new cells regenerate the self and that's exactly why i've created this meditation the link is in the description if you want to check it out it's absolutely free I've created it so you can begin this journey. Don't forget to check it out. It's right there in the description. I pinned it to the comments. It's my inner sanctuary meditation. It's a guided meditation. It's absolutely free. I know you're gonna dig it and get you on the right path. So let's talk about the number 33. 33 vertebrae in the human spine. Jesus himself lived to be 33 years of age. And you see, he was also crucified at that age. When the oil arrives at the very top, this awaiting is the optic thalamus, an egg-shaped organ in the middle of the head. When it crosses this little gastric nerve, which is called, that is actually the crucifixion. That is the correlation. This oil is not killed, and it is not destroyed in any way. It is magnified 1,000-fold, and the oil then touches the optic thalamus, and for two and a half days, two and a half days, remains in a condition that is considered to be dead and then reaches the pineal gland. So after two and a half days, illumination of the optic thalamus and the pineal gland, this is so important. The optic thalamus was known as the light of the world by the Egyptians and the Greeks because they knew their physiology and anatomy. You see, the ancients knew that this precious oil will descend from the claustrum, from the cerebrum, and then differentiate itself from the pineal and pituitary glands and descend down the spinal cord. And the enlightened portion of mankind were able to cause the Christ oil to ascend, which ascends to the optic thalamus and causes it to be lightened, hence enlightenment. I know you've heard that before. You see, because when we practice this and we actually do it in a proper way, millions and millions of dormant brain cells are now activated. This is why it's called enlightenment. They are activated. They are lightened up. They are energy. They are electromagnetic energy and they become alive. So there are many things that can hinder this process. A couple main things that keep us from experiencing enlightenment. Very simple practicing sex at the wrong time, indulging in our animalistic urges, bad food, continually feeding ourselves a diet that is not natural or healthy in any way can hinder this process. I think you know where I'm going with this. Alcohol, 
drugs, negativity, that stress, all of that is not even from a physical standpoint bad, which it totally is, but from a metaphysical standpoint, it is the one thing that contributes to our low vibration, our inability to actually rise above.